e il tuo personaggio ci vuoi, ci vuoi raccontare qualcosa di più di, del tuo personaggio che comunque è, è un personaggio chiave perché è quello che poi diciamo, tende a, a, a portare avanti la memoria di Ian Palak e a riabilitarla mh, rispetto all'influenza no, del, del, degli oppressori del, eh, di quello che stava accadendo in quegli anni nel, in Cecoslovacchia è stato, è stato difficile immergersi in una realtà così distante da, da quella attuale eh, oppure hai trovato, hai trovato questo personaggio facile per te nelle, nelle tue cose? Uh, I don't think it was easy at all, but at the same time, uh, the script written by Stefan Hulik was wonderful, and which is great for an actor to read a script where you have, like, everything was there, and what we couldn't find, we could have talked to Agnieszka, and uh, yeah, the times changed, and I was born in 1983 too, so I haven't really experienced that period, so I, mm, I had to talk to my parents, to my friends, read a lot of books, because for you to understand, in our countries we really like to forget things, um, especially hard or bad things that happen in our country, and it wasn't really easy to talk to people what happened, because a lot of people still don't want to talk about it or it's something that they just they just closed and with this topic uh we brought it like I, i'm so i'm so proud of our generation i'm so proud of these guys of Stefan, uh, Stefan. so they they just brought it into light so we finally can talk about it and um and to know what happened before, because really the, the young generation, they, they don't really know who Jan Palach was and what happened. They just knew some Russians came and it was pretty bad for a while, but it's not like that anymore, so who cares. So it's good to talk about it, to know about it. And yeah, I was so honored to play um, Dagmar because uh, she's also still alive and it was like huge responsibility to take this role and um, to make it the way that she's not disappointed or her family and but I think Agnieszka made such a great job so all of us really believe in this project and I think I think it's amazing. Grazie. Vorrei iniziare a aprire un po' le domande al pubblico se ce ne sono. Io ne ho tantissime, sono curiosa. Intanto, insomma, Praga è eh, attualmente tutta lucida, ripulita, rosa, verde, celeste. Come avete fatto a ridarcela com'era? È una prima cosa. Secondo, se eh, è stato già fatto vedere, e io questo non lo so, a Praga. Mi pare di capire che la protagonista che deve fare, che fa Dagmar, che fa l'avvocato, la, è, è di lì, Agnieszka è polacca, avete mescolato altri eh, attori o comunque mh, artisti dai paesi dell'ex est europeo, quanto è costato? A chi l'avete venduto? Cioè praticamente possiamo andare avanti un'ora. I go first. <coughs> it, it, you ask, it, did you ask if it has been screened in Prague? Is that one, part, one of the yes. subsidiary yes. questions? Yes. Um, it premiered in um, what the Czechs um, called Palak Week in January of this year on the HBO service on three consecutive Sundays. Um, it has also played in all the other uh, places where HBO has um, uh, a services in, in, in the Central European region. Um, it is being distributed internationally outside of the region by um, Beta, Beta Film, um, and uh, I believe it will be seen in quite a few Western European countries over the next 12 months. In addition, uh, it's played 
at many international film festivals. It was in Toronto, it will be in New York, it was at Telluride, it opened at Rotterdam. So, one of the things from my selfish corner, which is to kind of spread the word about what is possible and what is happening in Central Europe in, in filmmaking and in the top end of television, it's very gratifying to see this sort of exposure. I think that um, Thomas has better place than I to talk about how you turn Prague back by 40 years. Well, we turned Prague into uh, Prague that existed 40 years ago by not filming in Prague a lot of the times. Uh, a lot of the stuff was shot um, in, in different places. And also, you might be surprised that there are still the main streets and, you know, the opening scene, which was at uh, a place called Lanzasla Square, which is the biggest square in Prague, if you're familiar with it. It had to be very, uh, you know, it had to be changed digitally very much. It, it was, uh, and uh, UPP, which is um, one of the major studios in Central Europe, based in Prague, uh, that does post-production work, did a fantastic job there. So, basically it's a mixture of not shooting in Prague, using digital uh, touching and digital post-production stuff, and also of using objects and buildings and spaces that haven't really changed in the last 40 years. And I can say, um I have never experienced or seen such a precise preparation for this movie. So um, the cost costumes, uh, every everything really was prepared so well. So it really looks, or, or a lot of things actually wear from that time. So so it really looks like looks because of this great great preparation and every everybody was so. How you say when you are really into it and really believe it, like in this project, so they try to do their best. Just to, to Thomas's point, I mean, it, it does. It, 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 this is an example of a story that was less known. Certainly, the Buresh of a story was not particularly known within the Czech Republic, and um, I don't know if you read some of the book that you've been given, but obviously it became, for obvious reasons, a very, very personal film for Agnieszka, who had been at Farmu, a very distinguished uh, film school in Prague, which actually Thomas is a graduate of as well, as is the writer, Stefan Hude. Um, and I think we have to say that a lot of the depiction of the times is a poetic remembrance, in a way, of how it felt for Agnieszka at that time. Um, acutely observed and accurate, I'm sure, but at the same time, um, given an extra dimension through, through her being an artist. And I think just to, to talk about Agnieszka, because it is crucial in this miniseries, and I think she has put herself into the work very much. She was in Prague in 1968, she was studying FAMU, as Antony said, and then she started to have troubles because she was protesting against the Soviet invasion and eventually she got arrested and she spent about three months in, in a jail in Prague and she got expelled out of the country. So she spent about two years in the Czech Republic, she speaks perfectly, uh, she speaks perfectly Czech but also Slovak, she's even better in, in Slovak than in Czech. So she could really uh, work with the actors, she understood everything, she could, you know, read the screenplay. And, uh, but also, the fact that she is not living in the Czech Republic, and she hasn't been, basically, in the Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia for the last 40 years, gave her a different point of view. And I think that was, that was crucial in the film, and it played out very, very well. Allora, sia per Anthony che per Thomas, ma intanto il progetto è incredibile, io ho visto solo la prima puntata, sono rimasto meravigliato. Cosa principale, soprattutto le nuove generazioni, io stesso non sapevo tantissime cose, pur essendo stato a Praga, avendo visto il posto di Jan Pallack, eccetera. La domanda è per HBO Europe, questo è una specie di trampolino di lancio, quindi la mia curiosità, ovviamente, vista l'altissima qualità anche dei mezzi qui in 
Europa, qual è l'intenzione? Poi magari che non è che ci mancano storie originali qui in, in Europa. Invece per Thomas la domanda è proprio questa qua, qual è stato l'effetto veramente su le persone nate, noi facciamo un quindicenne cecoslovacco, ovviamente ignora completamente tutta questa storia, quindi qual è, qual è stato il risultato? Io personalmente a Praga ho visto dove hanno ucciso i partigiani uccisi che hanno ucciso a Aydrin che poi sono andato a vedere dove, dove prende Jan Palla, anche c'è la targa, a Piazza Vincestrao, quindi questa memoria storica come funziona sulle nuove generazioni. Ok, uh, to answer your question, I'm not sure I understood everything because it just kind of, uh, yeah, I, but I, hopefully I did. Uh, as for the impact on, on our generation or on, on, the, on the younger generation, um, I think, you know, we were screening the miniseries, the whole miniseries to high school students. It was just amazing uh, how much attention we got. You know, we were sitting in, in the same hall with them, there were maybe two, three hundred high school students. I remember my old days when we were, uh, when we went to some, to see some film while in high school. Usually you couldn't see a word from the film because we were making so much noise ourselves. But you could, you could, like, you could hear, how do you say that in English? Uh, yeah, the pin drop. So, yeah, you could, you could hear that there. And what was even more amazing, they raised a lot of questions. So, you know, I think this project is, very meaningful to a younger generation. I think it's going to be playing in high schools, it's going to be part of history, education, not only in the Czech Republic and in Slovakia, but maybe it might work as well in other post-communistic countries, because I think this situation has been lived and has been experienced in many countries. So it is quite universal for this part of the world. Uh, you say that it's a springboard for HBO Europe. Well, of course it is. I mean, we are incredibly lucky that, that Thomas and his producer, Carla Pavla, and Stefan brought the script to, to us. <coughs> We're extremely lucky that we have a very brilliant executive in the Czech Republic, um, Teresa Palakova, who pursued what had been a student graduation script, if I'm right, a single film account of this story, and said, you know what, we could turn this into an HBO style miniseries in the tradition of the US HBO went through that development process, she pushed up within the organization to say we have to do this. And we find ourselves with the finest situation and the most nerve-wracking situation. The finest situation is we have this extraordinary piece of work, but it's our first, so we've set the bar so high. I hope we're not frightened of doing anything else. 